As we all know, the MLB is full of polarizing players that have a large range of outcomes. In this video, I'll be going over who I think is the most polarizing player on every major league team. Starting off with the Arizona Diamondbacks, I have young pitcher Brandon Fatt. Fatt is only 25 years old and has just one season under his belt that saw him post an underwhelming 5.72 ERA in 96 innings. He has the stuff to become the eventual number two behind Gallon, but as of now, he gives up too much hard contact. His sophomore season will be a big one for him, but I think we could see him take the next step this year. Moving on to Atlanta, I'm going to go with Jared Kelenic in this spot. Kelenic was once a highly regarded prospect just a couple seasons ago, but he struggled mightily with the Mariners. In Atlanta though, he won't be tasked with too large of a role, which could ultimately make him more productive with less pressure. He's strictly just a platoon guy at this point, but if Kelenic can simply hold his own, that would be a massive addition for the Braves at the bottom of their order. Next is Baltimore, where my choice is sophomore starting pitcher Grayson Rodriguez. Grayson really struggled in the first half of 2023, posting a 7.35 ERA, eventually getting demoted. When he got recalled later in the season, Grayson pitched like an ace and pitched to a minuscule 2.58 ERA from then on. In 2024, I'm not sure which guy the Orioles are expecting to get, and that's what makes him so polarizing, but I bet that it's closer to the version we saw in the second half. Moving on to the Boston Red Sox now, I have outfielder Jaron Duran. Duran has been given the keys to the leadoff spot so far this season, proving that the Red Sox have major belief in his ability. Duran also has the tools to become a successful major league hitter, he's just yet to find consistency thus far. Entering his fourth season, this will likely be a make or break year for Duran and his potential is something to keep an eye on for the remainder of 2024. Imanaga is my pick for the Chicago Cubs for 2024 coming over from Japan. Any pitchers that make the trip to North America likely face turbulence initially and often struggle before settling in. It's also yet to be seen how Imanaga's stuff will translate over against major league hitters. The range of outcomes are wide, but the Cubs hope that he can become the team's ace. Any player that has yet to step in the MLB will always be a polarizing one. To the White Sox now, I'm going with recent addition pitcher Eric Fetty who was also playing overseas last season. Fetty actually won the KBO equivalent of the Cy Young last year as he completely revamped his pitch arsenal moving to a deeper pitch mix. The last time Fetty was in the majors, he was a fringe number 5 starter but since he's now a different pitcher, could that lead to more success for him this season? Nobody truly knows what to expect from him in 2024. Arguably the easiest choice on this list is Ellie De La Cruz for the Reds. Ellie is basically the definition of a polarizing player because his range of outcomes are just so wide. At times, Ellie can look like the best player in the game, while at others, he looks like a guy that needs more seasoning in AAA. The Reds badly need him to take the consistency jump in 2024 as they can't afford the guy that was in the batter's box struggling near the end of last season. Moving to the Cleveland Guardians, I'm going with the potential ace of the staff, Shane Bieber. Bieber was once among the game's best starting pitchers just a couple of seasons ago, but with a dip in velocity the past two years, Bieber is yet to regain his Cy Young form. It's been noted that Bieber's velocity has risen back up to what it's been when he was at his best thanks to a trip to driveline in the offseason. Recapturing his form could be in the cards for Bieber this upcoming 2024 season. Heading to the Rockies now, my pick is shortstop Ezekiel Tovar. Tovar just signed a massive overall contract recently but has yet to truly show that he's capable to be an above average major leaguer. He obviously has a prospect pedigree to do so, but it's a lot of money for a non-proven player. The Rockies lineup will likely be terrible this upcoming season, but how terrible it will be will likely come down to whether or not Tovar takes a leap forward. This one was a toss-up, but I'll go with the former number one overall pick, Casey Mize. Mize has largely struggled with injuries early in his career that has severely impacted his development, but all reports so far indicate his stuff has been better than ever. He's currently up a few ticks on the fastball, and the Tigers' management has been raving about him. If he can become the pitcher he was expected to be when initially drafted, the Tigers could be better than we think this year. Heading to the Astros now, my choice is Christian Javier, who is coming off a poor 2023 season. Javier was a really solid pitcher the years prior to last year, but he struggled in a full-time starter's role. Since he's mostly just a two-pitch pitcher, he's susceptible to struggling at times if a certain pitch isn't working. Similar to many players on this list, Javier has a wide range of outcomes from ace-level caliber to potentially falling out of the rotation. On the pitching side of things, you can't get much more polarizing than Cole Raggins from the Royals. This is a guy that really struggled during his brief time with the Rangers last year before being moved to the Royals, placed him in the rotation, and absolutely dominated. Raggins is a lefty that throws near 100 miles per hour with above average breakers. Command is the only thing that could keep him from reaching A status this year, but it's entirely possible that he becomes an absolute stud. Next is the Los Angeles Angels, and I'm going with outfielder Taylor Ward. The Angels don't have many polarizing players, but Ward is someone that has flashed monster potential at times during each of the past few years. His problem is that he can't keep up for consistent stretches, often getting hot for a couple weeks, then cooling down. 
Adding in the cleanup spot behind Trout, the Angels need him to fully break out in 2024. Tyler Glass now is the obvious choice for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Acquired from the Tampa Bay Rays, Glass now is always productive when he's healthy and on the mound. The polarizing aspect for him is his inability to stay healthy despite always finding success when he is. Glasnow has never topped over 120 innings in a major league season, but if he does that in 2024, he might legitimately be in the game's best at the position conversation. The Marlins have so many options that could be handed the polarizing title, but in this spot, I go with their brand new infielder, Tim Anderson. Anderson has constantly competed for batting titles throughout his career before he had a disaster 2023 that saw him hit for a poor average while only hitting a single homer. What player will the Marlins get this season? Will it be Anderson that we saw for all those all-star caliber seasons or the replacement level guy that he was just last year? Of course, my pick for the Brewers is going to be 20-year-old sensation Jackson Churio who made the opening day roster. Churio is a special talent with blazing speed and a really solid pop for his young age. The question though is what his full potential for just this season will be, well that remains to be seen. I think he very well be a 20 homer, 30 stolen base kind of guy right out of the gate and if he gets the keys to the leadoff spot, watch out for a massive year from him. It feels like for as long as Buxton is a twin, he will always be the pick for their most polarizing player. The talent is undeniable and when he's been healthy he's often been a pretty solid player but he never remains healthy. If it does so happen that he plays an entire season, Buxton has the potential to put up all-star level numbers, which could be the case in 2024. Health has been and will always be his biggest kryptonite. Moving on to the New York Mets now, my pick is newly acquired Luis Severino. Severino was once a top starting pitcher during his early days as a Yankee, but recent injuries have limited him from getting back to that level. All spring reports indicated that his velocity has looked great and he was actually tipping his pitches for almost all of last year. If both of these are actually true, Severino could have a solid bounce back season for the Mets in 2024. Another easy selection for me is Carlos Rodon of the New York Yankees. Rodon had a couple ace caliber seasons years ago, but dealt with injuries last year that made his first year as a Yankee a rough one. Now having a full and healthy spring training with reports that his velocity has looked solid, Rodon will be tasked with being the ace due to the Garrett Cole injury. Nobody knows what to expect from Rodon this season, which is what makes him such a polarizing talent. I wish I could choose nobody for the athletics, but since I have to, I guess I'll go with arguably their best player, Zach Geloff. Geloff was actually really good in his brief time with the A's last year, but it remains to be seen what his full potential really is. His strikeout rate might cap his overall upside, but he's a pretty toolsy guy that might be exciting to build around if everything breaks right for him this upcoming season. From the Phillies, my choice is Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber is your typical boomer bust type player with three true outcomes. You know what you're likely going to get with 30 homers every season, but the average usually fluctuates largely. Sometimes he can hit 250 and his season ends up being special, but other times he falls below 200 and just really loses his value. Schwarber is a great player, but comes along with a low floor at times. O'Neill Cruz is a selection for the Pirates who largely resembles Ellie from the Reds. Cruz has all the tools and skills to be a superstar in the major leagues, but whether or not he can put them all together is another question. The potential to be a consistent 30 homer, 30 stolen base player is evident, but he will have to keep healthy and improve his consistency in order for that to happen. Newly acquired pitcher Dylan Seas comes in as a pick from the San Diego Padres. Seas is a high risk, high reward kind of pitcher that has massive strikeout ability but also carries quite the ratio risk. Due to his usually high walk rate, some C starts can turn into disasters, but some can also turn into gems. Keeping those walks in check will be the key to success in 2024. You might be wondering how the recent signing winner Blake Snow might be polarizing, but let's be honest, he's a different pitcher almost every month and certainly every season. When Snell is on his game, he's as good as anyone, but when he gives up walks at his high rate to go along with getting hit hard at times, he can be among the league's worst as well. After all, there was a reason why he went unsigned for so long. I really don't think the Mariners have a polarizing player, but if I have to pick one, I'm going off the board with Mitch Hanager. Hanager has had some really good years in the past with the Mariners, but constant injuries have kept him from finding a consistent groove at the plate. Hitting in the middle of the order, the Mariners are banking on him finding his game in order to have a good 2024 season. Moving on to the Cardinals here, I'm going with infielder Nolan Gorman. Gorman is known for his immense power, but it also comes with an alarming strikeout rate which can make him streaky at times. He can be such a fun player to watch at certain points, but can also be frustrating to watch at others. If he can improve his play discipline even slightly, that would majorly improve his overall profile. Toolsy Jose Ziri is my choice for the Tampa Bay Rays, coming off a nice season where he had 25 homers and 12 steals last year. If you want to talk about a streaky player, Ziri should be at the top of the list. He has stretches where he's stealing bags and hitting bombs, while other times he's simply just posting zeros. I think he has more speed to show this year in making a 25 homer, 25 steal campaign within reach. 
Moving on to the Texas Rangers, I'm choosing outfielder Evan Carter, recent World Series champion. Carter is an incredible player and he showed that in a successful play during the entire playoffs last year. The polarizing aspect surrounding Carter though has to do with his struggles against left-handed pitchers up till this point. If he ends up being a platoon bat down the road, that can completely change his outlook. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is my polarizing player for the Blue Jays as he's widely regarded differently among the general public. He obviously had that one monster season where he looked like a top 5 player in baseball but since then he's been nothing more than slightly above average. Is Vlad truly closer to that superstar we saw in 2021 or is he just a solid player we saw the past two seasons? Finally is the Washington Nationals where I'm going with former top pitching prospect Mackenzie Gore. Gore was once viewed as a potential future ace, but hasn't exactly turned out that way this far. Still just 25 though, Gore still has the ability to become the pitcher he was set out to be. His velocity has been up throughout spring, and this could ultimately be his breakout year. That wraps up my most polarizing player for every MLB team. Let me know what you agree or disagree with in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.